for me. I say, thank God I'm free. Oh, And have you understand that? The 
see, that's not the situation here. We have to learn to learn to embrace our praise. Right? Then because the battle is to separate you from your praise. Because the devil understands that God inhabits your praise. So he can take your praise and he can take your worship. Jesus. 
probably not saying this. We probably we need to work out, right? We need to eat better. We need to do all these things to take care of this earthly vessel. But when you come into an atmosphere feel like this, and the spirit is moving, and you find out that man, I probably lost about 15, 20 pounds just right here. Just give it God. Give it to God. Amen. Just give it to God. I don't want to just give it to God. Because all of the glory. All of the honor. And all of the praise. Belong to Him. Hallelujah. So I don't mind working out. Matter of fact, I'm not, I'm not even going to put on my suit jacket. I don't want to break this atmosphere. I don't want to try to be politically correct. I'd rather be spiritually in tune. Amen. 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 Come on, give God a hand. Clap. Hallelujah. 
say to God is so good. When you have it, I know you've been standing praising, but I'm going to ask you to stand one more time. And Facebook, if you're at home, I'll stand up, get up off the couch, get out of the bed, push back from the breakfast table, get out of the golf cart, whatever you're watching, uh, go to Ezra chapter 10. Yes, yes, Ezra chapter 10. I'll, I'll take my time. I'll take my time. Amen. It looks like we're all on the same page. And I'm reading from the uh, New King James, and it says, now, while Ezra was praying and while he was confessing, weeping and bowing down before the house of God, a very large assembly of men, women, and children gathered to him from Israel, for the people wept very bitterly. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. So Ezra was one of three Israeli leaders that were sent from Babylon or a place of captivity to rebuild the house of God. He was sent from Babylon from a place of captivity to Jerusalem, which is a place of freedom and worship. In order for him to get free from Babylon, he had to have favor from the king. And in his case, it was king of Xerxes. So this is what I want to pull over for a moment and I want you to understand something. That everything that God has called you for, you are going to need some unsaved folk to help you get it accomplished. Don't think that God can't use unsaved folk to bless what he's doing in your life. And most of the time, matter of fact, I'll say from my life all the time, it will be someone with some influence and some sustenance. Because if God can use a donkey to set to ride the Savior around, if he can use a donkey to hit you on the side of the hill, he can also use a man to show you favor and bless you. Amen. 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 Because when you're trying to do something for God, it does not matter whether he used the resources from. You have to learn how to receive it. Amen. Don't get so religious where you say, well, they ain't saved. I can't. The devil is alive. <laughs> oh, give it to me. Give it to me now. Give it to me. I'll bless it and break it and give it to the Lord. I don't care where you got it from. But I'm going to bless it and break it now. If I know you got it wrong, I don't want it. But if I don't know, I'm going to bless it, break it, and say, Lord, you cleanse it, wash it. Now can we use it? If he say yes, we're going to use it to his glory. Amen. But he was one of three leaders that was released from captivity. To go and build a place of worship. And that's what we're doing, saints of God. We're building a place of worship. Amen. So one of the people that was released was Zerubbabel. Now, each one had a different purpose. Hey, all right now. A different purpose, right? So Zerubbabel supervised the construction of the temple. That's what he was sent for. for. Now, he too had the favor from the king. And that was King Cyrus. Now I want you to see the I want you to see the connection here. Just like uh, Nehemiah, Nehemiah, the same King Cyrus, released him, and his job was to rebuild the wall. Remember, we talked about a couple of weeks ago that God wants to protect what He's placed in you, so He's going to place the wall of protection around. You. Matter of fact, there's warring angels that's in heaven that's watching you. Sometimes I would take one. Remember in the book of Daniel, it was Daniel, it was one Michael that was looking over the whole nation of Israel. Look at the power that God had. It only takes one. And then it was Ezra. Ezra, Ezra had a specific task, and I believe Ezra's task is the same as mine. And any minister or any preacher, pastor, uh, the same with, with your pastor, I understand. It's the same thing. And that's to 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 to, to Build the praise. Yeah. Or introduce the people or reintroduce the people to praise yeah. and to worship yeah. and to the word. See, Ezra was a scholar. Mm -hmm. Ezra was a scribe. Ezra was well versed in the Torah. Yeah. Now, just as a side joke when I was reading, I'm like, well, the Torah is only five books. Mm -hmm. I have 66 books. <laughs> so, what that tells me is that it's going to take me. I need to be in the Word a little more often. Yes, that's right. I need
need to become a scribe. What is, what is a scribe? A scribe is one that notes, take notes. Yeah. That's why I encourage the saints of God, when you're in your bed and you're asking God for something, put a, put a notebook by your bed. Become a scribe. Yeah. Right? Begin to write down the visions, that, the things that God has said to you. This, the vision that God gave me, it came years ago. Yes. I'm not saying it came years ago. I want to say probably about 20 years ago. But he had to work on me yes. to position me to begin to do what he'd given me to do. Right. Now, since he released me to do it, mm -hmm. he's opened up everything that I need to get it done. Yes. See, Ezra came, came back out of captivity. He came out expecting to find people serving God with gladness. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes we have expectation, expectation in people. But the people don't have expectation in themselves. Oh, right? You remember that old commercial? And it was Pinocchio. And Pinocchio said, you have potential. You have potential. But every time he said it, his nose grew. And I know all of you old enough to know about the story about uh, Pinocchio. Every time he told lies, you got to be so you with me. But these people... These people, when he went back to Israel, now this is the place where they were supposed to be building the temple and building the wall, but when he got back, that's not what he saw. Uh -huh. And so it burdened him. He wanted the Lord to change the situation and blame himself for not being able to change the people's heart. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something, saints of God. We can't change the people's heart. That's it. That's right. So I make it in my mind that I'm not going to carry the weight and heaviness because folks can't get what God has given you or given for them. And in the text, you're going to find out that Ezra had not done anything, but it was all the burden of the people. Now, saints of God, I know, it, yeah, I know I'm a pastor. And pastors in the house, pastors listen on. Listen, saints of God, we cannot bear the burden of the people that he's seen. Our responsibility is later in the word, give you the word, and then release the Holy Spirit to do what he needs to do in your life. I'm trying to help some pastors and preachers out there. I know you may say, well, brother, you haven't been preaching long, but the devil is alive. I've been preaching for over 25 years. I just haven't been preaching formally in here. So don't get it twisted. I'm not a novice in this. God has trained me well and sent me through some very anointed people to continue my training, amen? So I'm not coming here playing with you. Because I'm not going to be, God's not going to hold me accountable. See, Lord, I gave you what you told me to give them to. See, we can't be like Moses, right, and miss the promised land. Because he, he saw the people and the people caused him to do what God told him not to do. I'm not doing that. I'm not just going to slide into him just in between the count clouds. Like, look, look at that. No, no, no. I want, to, I want the horn. I want the trumpet horn. I want the angels separate. Separate. Oh, oh, oh. I get that. So I'm sorry, Sandy. I love you. But I'm not going to allow you to cause me to have trouble like that. But he wanted the people to know how important and essential the word of God was. That's the burden that Ezra had. That's the burden that we have. Yes. And if you're under the sound of my voice, that's the burden that you have. It's not just the preacher. It's not just the pastor's responsibility to get the word out. That's it. Matter of fact, a very good friend of mine whose ministry is not too far, his ministry is called to get the word out. The word is out. Mm -hmm. We have to get the word out. And Ezra understood nothing supersedes the worship of God. And it's not contingent upon your obedience. Your obedience is required. Yes. Yeah. In order to worship God in spirit and in truth, your obedience is required. Because yeah. Ezra loved the people. And just like I love the people. Now I want to talk to you about, now you know the four loves, right? Mm -hmm. We have a store, storage, right? Mm -hmm. Love, that's the family affection. Then we have the eros, which is the passionate. Then you have the agape, which is the love that God gives. But I want to talk to you about one more. And it's hased. It's a Hebrew word. It's, you have to 
gedacht. Sehr. Hallelujah. I, I thought about that when I did that, man. Okay. Because I went to YouTube. See, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that. I can read that and say that. I'm not going to even tell you that. So I went to YouTube. And if you ever want to learn how to say a Hebrew or Greek word, search it. That's part of study to show thyself approved. A word of me not be ashamed. But Christ is in my That's part of that. So I'm not going to say I do that. So I went and it said, say it. Say it. And it's a complicated trans translation. It has a wide range of trans uh, definitions. Watch this. One of them is mercy. Mercy. Wow. I say it. The other one is grace. Oh, that, oh, that, mm, that, that, that sounds pretty good right there. So grace. How about this one? Faithful. Faithful. Mm. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Right there. But see, I walk in favor. Favor ain't fair, but I got it. I used to have an old saying, of, and anybody that know me, when they see me, I'd say, hey, how you doing? I got that favor. I got it dripping all over me, just like this one. I got it. I got it. I got it, Derek. I'm telling you, I got that favor on my life. Don't you be ashamed to tell somebody, I got that favor. Matter of fact, let me touch you because it's dripping off me. I can probably anoint you with the favor that's on my life. Hallelujah. I got that favor. How about this one? Loyalty. Mm. Not just loyalty, but covenant loyalty. How about that one? We see covenant loyalty right here. I'm not going to point them out. I'm not going to point out Pastor Ernestine and Tyrone. I'm not pointing them out. I'm going to let them sit there and relax. Because when I look at them, I see a covenant loyalty. They understand the commitment. Hallelujah. I don't know. And I don't like to see the names on the board. Right? Uh, Sister Ruth and, and Brother Jew, we talk about covenant. We talk about long time. We talk about being enduring some things. Lord, I don't know about you. It was a battle. I know what for, but that's all. 
okay, I'm going to tell it again. We all come out of blood and land, word of my testimony. So I'm going to tell it again. But I was all the way in the back. There was 1,500 people. It was a huge sanctuary. And God, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. He's calling. Okay, Lord, I'm on the right track. I hear you. Amen. Amen. But when, I, when he called me and I gave up, I never wanted to go back. I never backslid, thanks to God. Not to say I didn't struggle. But I never turned from God and wanted to do anything other than because I know what I had back there wasn't better than what I'm doing right here. It may be hard sometimes. It may be challenging sometimes. It might require you to lose some friends. But I'm telling you, there's no friend like me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a friend that's going to stick with me closer to me, bro. He's going to love me than my wife. He's going to hold me tighter than she can. And can't nobody hold me tighter than her. Hallelujah, girl. We'll talk about that later. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Now, as we pray, and as we pray, and as we pray, as we pray, as we pray, Pray. And that's all I want you to know. Prayer changes things. Yes. Yes. And if you like the slain, slain person, prayer changes things. Yes. Yes. That's probably in the urban Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, the urban dictionary. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, just, you'd be amazed at what's in the urban dictionary. I, I, yes. I pinch it up because the young engineer said a word that it kind of threw me off. He said, Yeah, man, I was ghosted. Yeah. And he was ghosted. I mean, the Holy Ghost came. I'm like, whoa, what is that? What you doing? Know? I'm like, oh, that's not what I'm talking about. Oh, so ghosted me. Tell that some, someone just didn't call you no more. You mean, right? You had a good time. You're dating, right? But then they just don't show up no more. Mm -hmm. You don't call. See, some of you do God like that. Not y'all in here. And I'm talking to you. He's in that home. Some of you all do God like that. You ghost God. You show up at church one time and then you don't show up no more. Don't be ghosting God. You know where you are. You can't ghost God. Stop ghosting God. Stop ghosting God. Stop ghosting God. Ghost God. Hallelujah. John 1 5 and 15 says it like this. And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. Do you know that this morning? Yes, so it is amazing. Like I said, it is amazing that God hears the way he does. Like I share, like I share with you during praise and worship. Derek and I had not spoken other than when we were talking about this keyboard. But even though we just speak physically, spiritually, yes. we're on the same page. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let me share something with you. When, when God showed me my vision. I scribbled it down. I wrote it down on some papers and I just had it, right? Because as he was speaking, I couldn't write it as fast as he was giving it. So what I did was I gave it to my wife. Now see, my wife, my wife is very studious. My wife is, she used to proofread books, right? So for people, the authors, when they write their books, so my wife would edit it and proofread it. See, see how good God kind of knew. You know, I, I'm, like, not, I'm not a verbal expert, right? I, my write, writing looked like a doctor prescription, right? And sometimes I'll tear up a word just out of my mouth. But so and my wife always say, you know what, honey, before you send that, let me read it. Right? And I don't have a problem with that because, see, see I know she's here to help me. Don't be sending out crazy messages and then folks look at it like, what, what, what is wrong with Pastor? <laughs> so I give it to the one that God sent to help me. Right? And she read what well, she gave it back. I'm like, I said all that. God told me all that. Then I nicely punctuated the word. Part of me. Yeah, right. We are one. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Colossians 2, 13 and 14, the New Living says it like this. You were dead because your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record. Hallelujah. I had to step away from that, but let me get back over here. He said he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away and nailed it to the cross. A leader 
show up when it's necessary. Hallelujah. See, a leader is, you see a leader. And then you improve on their leadership skills. But you can, it's hard to make a leader when they don't have the ability or the desire to be a leader. Let that be to anyone that's starting a business, that's in ministry. That's why you will not see us put anyone in position until they have been proven. I'm telling you, thank you, God. We're not going to, we need to see your gifts. We want to see your walk, right? We don't want to just give you a title and you flood. That's why people fail, because the title is too heavy for them. They're trying to live up to a title instead of the title the man can be in place.
So I don't be a better, y'all, but don't be jealous. I don't be a much better, stronger pastor when I spend time with my pastor. Amen. Now, see, I'm not a pastor and I have a mentor, which is Apostle Matthew J. Shaw. Then I have a spiritual advisor, which is Apostle Raheem Moore. He intercedes for us, he prays for us. And that's like he called us and gave us a very, very relevant word. Then I have brothers in uh, Christ that my 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 uh, accountability apparatus is very strong because I want to be right in the sight of God. I don't want to cause people to fail. I don't want to, don't want the church to let them fall. Amen. I want to do it right. And how do you do it right? By being accountable to God and to man. Amen. Amen. So if you have your offering, I want you to stand to your feet. Now we're going to change up a little bit. But let's double shift into the Lord. And now we want, when we come back, we're going to keep up. Hey, come on in. That come on in. I like that. Let you go. 
on Facebook. As I always say every week before we close, it's not, it does not matter the struggles you have. It does not matter what walls that built around you. It does not matter what chains that bind you. It does not matter what gifts, what talents you have. Bring it to the house. We would love to have you. Amen. Facebook. We'll see you next time. But if you want to feel this anointing.